what's that I heard? What? That's, yeah. Hold on a minute, what? That's not, what was that? What? Ian, can you confirm? Can you confirm? That's right. That's right. It's, yeah. I am, in fact, confirmed to be the rank one dog killer for about an hour or so in the world. Oh, yeah. Feels good, man. Feels good, dude. The rank one dog killer. Perfect for drama. Couldn't have, couldn't have asked for any better. Couldn't have asked for anything better. Couldn't have asked for anything better. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, it was only for an hour. And, and as we know, I mean, the, the thing about it is not to be smug. I would hate that to... What? A trophy for me? Well, all right. Not to be smug, but as we know, the Fire Mage is an extraordinarily difficult class to master. And it requires a lot of skill and precision in order to get the really good results with it. And that's why I want to thank everybody, all of you who have graciously contributed towards this moment for me, right? Thank you all. Thank you all. Wonderful. Get off the stage. <laughs> Get off the stage. <laughs> Good afternoon, all of you. I hope you're all having a great week because Mythic Antorus is really good. It's really, really good. I don't give a shit about all the hoopla. And I said it. I said we might see. We might see. We have to wait till we get in. It's really good. It's really, really good. I'm enjoying the shit out of Mythic Antorus. It's tuned nicely. It's got all sorts of things going on. I wasn't even annoyed at Mythic Enar. It's all right. It's, it's still Enar, which is a bit weird. Uh, but <laughs> it's a thing. But it's not bad. It's not bad. It's definitely one of the better raids of the expansion. Yeah, it's fine. Like, I, I know those guilds smashed through it. And a big part of that is what we asked for. Not one-shotting the raid every time someone made a mini mistake. That's all it took for people to get up and claw back up and fight back and adapt and move around and do different things. And it was great. It was a ton of fun. I've had, I've had like a really good time in it this week and I'm excited to raid on Wednesday, on Sunday. I'm excited to raid there on Sunday. I'm looking forward to Ianar. We've got to finish that. We've got the bridge boss next. Then we've got King Garath. He's pretty, looks like he's pretty cool on Mythic. All good for me. All good, dude. I am down with it. I am down with it. It's fucking... It's a good raid. They've done a good job. And I, I will do a video to attest to that. And it's not too easy. It's not. It picks up in difficulty in a nice level. It keeps going up. Keeps going up. Thumbs up from me, dude. Thumbs up from me. Thank you. I saw loads of subs and stuff and the subs that are coming now. Thank you all. I don't address them during the show for obvious reasons. Love you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Right there. But that's not why you're here right now. It's drama time. <laughs> now, I was reading through the stories. Now, we have an update. Does anybody remember last week's story with the 10-year-old girl? The creep. <laughs> you might remember. I, I imagine many of you can remember the story of the, uh, the guy who was hassling the 10-year-old girl. You might remember. Anyway, our wonderful lady has sent us an update. Because we made some assumptions... Right? We made some assumptions, and she wants to address them. She has no issue with the story, but she wants to make sure that the details are clear. So here they are. There are four, four, four things. She did have a typical girl pet, as we guessed. It was the black lion pet. But she did not name it Snuggle Boots, Cuddle Monkey, Buggle Bum, or anything like that. In fact... It was named Midnight. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So we were definitely looking at somebody who's perhaps a fan of Trivium. I don't want to go out on a limb. Maybe. Right? Very, very much a possibility. Very much a possibility. Two, she sadly no longer has her account with her Hunter is on. Or the Celestial Steed. That was her birthday present because the email was shut down. How very sad. Three, everyone else in the drama stories includes where they're from. I didn't mention it. She's from West Virginia, born and raised. Yeah, born and raised. 
And four, the reason that she told the creeper why she was 10 years old is that she thought, naively, <laughs> naively, uh, that that would make him stop harassing her. Now, a reasonably wise decision was made then. <laughs> a reasonably wise decision was made. Uh, that if I tell this guy who's trying to, you know, hit on me that I'm 10 years old, maybe he'll go away. Um, which, I mean, in 99.999 recurring, of course, percent of chances, that would probably be true. That would probably be accurate. One would hope, one would hope that that's the way it would go down. Unfortunately, though, there you go. Now, we have a question for Andy. Hello! What does Ghost think about me changing my monk from a female Pandarian to a female high high mountain tauren because both races fit the fantasy of the monk well, here's the thing y'all see a question it's like high mountain no it's like mm, they ugly fam <laughs> shit they ugly you want to stay where the pussy clean <laughs> <laughs> apparently high mountain tauren have dirty pussies so much to think about might affect your decision I don't know. That's entirely on you. But that is the professional opinion of the transmog uh, hero who still has these gloves for some reason. Still has these. You got something to say about my gloves? <laughs> I don't stop. I want to know where you bought those gloves so I can avoid it like the <laughs> fucking plague. In case I one day go, oh, maybe I should go in that store. Right, chat, you're going to like this. You're going to like this title. As I type it, you're going to go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfection. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> right, we need two male friends. We will have Eric, whose surname finishes with an F. The Luo. Uh, oh my god, how the fuck do I say that? E-L-K-A with dots above it, squiggly line, triangle symbol, snake. Jack of Clubs R. I'm going to go with Matthias. Or Matthias. Can't you guys who live in, like, you know, Europe use normal British names? Like you should. I mean, let's be honest. Where's my girls at? Uh, who should we have? Oh, Exy. Sounds like... There we go. We'll be our girl. And the guild master ooh, will be Volden. Volden, which is a middle name. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Brexit. Actually, we've done really well with Brexit. It's only going to cost us 50 billion for a worse deal. I think that's a really good deal. Is it 50 million? 50 million for a worse situation? That seems like a bargain to me. <laughs> You're a Goron charge cake? That's awesome. Strong and stable. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 50 million. Good stuff, dude. All right, here we go. Here we go. A big, masculine, sweaty. Uh uh. Shit. I want to tell you how cool I'm smelling, but I'm smelling fresh, y'all. That's fresh. A sweaty bro hug to you, Mr. Preach, and a classy yet kind of slutty tip of the hat to Mr. Ghosty. What up, girl? Jesus Christ, that was creepy. <laughs> I don't want any cocaine. <laughs> I don't want any pills, my man. I don't want any pills. <clears throat> and a big, as always, a big fucking giant hairy knuckle bro fist to everybody in the chat right there. <sighs> This story takes place mostly over the course of that cataclysm. Though its beginning is at the very end of Wrath of the Lich King. I would kindly ask the chat. You've done fucked right up, Arthur. Oh, dude, did you go the wrong direction with this? I would kindly ask the chat to hold off on their judgment of me. All right? So can you guys chill the fuck out for five minutes? Can you give us five minutes without judging the man? 
as the story does have a somewhat satisfying end to it. <laughs> a tip to all our authors. There are many of you. And I know many of you don't get your stories into the show. Don't write that into the chat, because look what happens. Look. Look at that. My journey to WoW began soon after the release of The Burning Crusade. WoW was the first game I ever really played. Apart from a brief and very sad experience trying to play Age of Empires 3, but being unable to complete the tutorial. <sighs> However, I did pick it up fairly quickly. We've got a noob, ladies and gentlemen. What's his WoW progress score? A six. How do you get a six? How do you get a WoW progress score of six? <clears throat> Even though I made some god-awful mistakes along the way. One such event was spending an hour begging and harassing a geared dwarf paladin in Ironforge to boost me. An hour, I whispered him. He was extremely extremely explicit about telling me to go and fuck my own face but eventually my nagging paid off and he said fine where i was confused and i said what do you mean where he said where do you want the boost i told him i <laughs> says this word for word. I said, with magic, you noob. <clears throat> I should point out that at this point, I confused boost with buff. Age of Empires 3, huh? Yeah, that's a bitch. <sighs> I was struggling to kill an elite quest mob <laughs> on my level 13 hunter. At the time, I played in Azune EU. And his name was, and please do not stop reading the story after this. My character's name was Azune Prince. Fake and gay! It's fake and gay, Mike! Uh, I'll have you know... As Taran Mill Prince. He loves the cock. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's Taran uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> Now that little story aside, let's fast forward to the end of Wrath of the Lich King. I was around 16 at this point. Pubes on the pitch. Ready to play. My family was poor AF. So I had to go to the private servers. Whoa. Whoa. Us retailers, right? Don't mix with your kind. Yeah. I want a clear line down the middle. Retailers, plebs. Hipsters. That's right. On the retail side of the court, Andy, where we have all the balls and all the bats. <laughs> you know what? You've got a dream and a wish and a dick to fly on. And a girls team. Because we're retailers, apparently. <laughs> so I've heard. <clears throat> I've been hopping around several different... <laughs> and the retail prints... <laughs> I had been hopping around several different ones in these intermissions between being able to pay for a month of WoW and being able not to. Eventually finding one which was decent. Setting there even though I could at times afford a month or two of game time. What I loved about this private server what it's, uh, was that it was small. Small enough so that you could always have spots. But not too small. So there's always people around to play with. I played as a prop pally on retail and on the private server, and I really liked tanking. At some point, I got into a pug of Sartharian three drakes. <sighs> Nailed it. I did my job. I would proven myself. And I got invited to one of the two best guilds on the server. We were alliance. And our arch enemies, enemies were a horde guild called... You guys can pick. And I fucking hated those cunts. It says that in caps lock. Well, he means it. He fucking means it. They were always just one little step ahead of us. Always clearing shit before we did. Kicking our butts more than not in winter grasp. 
And sometimes the server's GMs would help them out when disputes arose. The dog killers. Yeah, <laughs> the dog killers is good. Can you believe that? Private server GMs get involved, man. It's fucking not right. One day, me and my to two close IRL friends who played, <laughs> who I played with, Eric and the Luo, <clears throat> decided to try a prank. We're going to play a prank. We're going to prank this Horde guild. Just a prank, bro. <clears throat> yeah. We're going to use our Horde characters to try and infiltrate the guild and do something mean to them from the inside. <laughs> That'll teach them. We managed to get invites to the guild, telling one of their officers, Exy, that we wanted to swap over and join them. Our names were fairly well known on the server, so she was pretty excited about the idea of getting us to join their raid team, at least as trials, as the bosses in ICC were finally getting debugged. Yes. And ready for release on our server, we decided we would play the long con and went with it. Our very first raid night, we had a trial test in Nax 10 with the dog killers to see how we could coordinate with a new team. It went smooth as my balls. With the Luo being top deeps all the time and Eric competing very closely with Exy's healing ult and myself just wrecking face as an OP tank monster that the pally was at the time. Yeah, it must be hard to tank when you've got a fucking continue button. Please tell me how skilled you are. And remember, you're talking to the, the, to the rank one dog killer in the world. So, please, please, educate me. Educate me. Please, please. We even had a blast in TeamSpeak. We actually started to really like their jokes, their silliness. Their raid environment was actually sorted. After the raid, we spoke to the GM, Valden. We told him what we originally intended to do, but told him we actually really like it here and had decided against it. We actually want to join them properly. Valden had his doubts. Appreciate the honesty, of course. And said we're going to stay as trials. <laughs> it took him all of two days before he made me an officer and promoted all three of us to their main raid team. So let's go forward a bit. We're in. We had some decent success in ICC. But the more important part of all of the story is the new relationship with Exy. She was a hell of a healer. That's right. She's rocking that priest. And even a very decent tank on her druid. Ooh, I don't know, guys. But she was actually the best DPS in the guild on her main. A Blood Elf Warlock. <sighs> There's something a little bit alluring about a girl warlock. I see what you're saying. She and I had a very thorny relationship with each other. Always competing, trying to outdo each other, and sometimes even purposely trying to screw the other one over in runs. Just to make the other one fall, fail in some way. We were both too proud to admit it got on our nerves though. And decided to laugh our way through it. <laughs> that was great how you fucked me there. That was awesome. Really liked it. All the while, probably wishing all manner of unspeakable evil onto the other's families. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fucking ICC. Legend. <laughs> Fuck your family. Fucking hardcore, man. Yours. Fucking aggressive. <laughs> aggressive. <coughs> One night, though. After an exhausting progress run on Putricide 10 Man Heroic, Exy and I stayed in TeamSpeak discussing what went wrong <laughs> and how we could try something different the next time. After about three minutes of productive, let's call it that, productive conversation, it turned into name calling, spewing venom at each other, finally realizing all that, releasing all that we had held inside us for about a month. I distinctly remember her saying something along the lines of, maybe if you used your brain instead of your thick, muscular dick, I added that bit, <clears throat> and focused on tanking instead of dreaming about me, you wouldn't have wiped the raid on the last pull. Oh shit. 
Oh shit. I was shocked. I fucking hated Exy. How the fuck could she possibly have the idea that I was daydreaming about her? The only response I could muster at the time was that I'd rather fuck a dead beaver with than her rusty vagina and disconnected from TeamSpeak. Now, Andy, your thoughts? A rusty vagina, does that imply some redheadedness or old? Maybe a robot, a cyborg vagina, if you will. Sounds sharp. But, like, one that's not been kept well, not well oiled. Not you know? well greased. Yeah, or maybe just too well fucked. <laughs> Can we say greased again? Like a, like a moist greasiness about it. Mm. Yeah? Slippery. 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 Absolutely. It's a good word, slippery. I disconnected from TeamSpeak. The next day, I told Eric and the Luo about this at school. And the look of their faces was a mix of surprise and sudden realization. They said something like, that explains it. Confused, I asked, explains what? Only to have them tell me that morning while I was at music camp. <coughs> Three guys at music class, eh? Just three dudes and flutes. Just three dudes and flutes. <clears throat> they had been doing some dailies with Valden, the GM. When he told them that he had to... Dem it actually says... <laughs> I'm going to put this in the chat for the chat. Copy. Paste. <laughs> they were doing some dailies with Valden. When he told them that he had to demote me for being an officer and was likely going to kick me from the guild. I was devoured. I kept asking for reasons and explanations. They didn't know. I rushed home after school, got on TS and went into the officer channel where I found Exy and Valden. I just blatantly started raging, demanding an explanation. As it was explained to me, Exy had revealed to Valden that I was shit-talking him for the entire night. That I had spent hours talking smack... <laughs> I'm going to twist it to... Hours to talking mad smack about him after the raid. Blaming all our putricide wipes on Valden. Saying that Valden was a piss-poor leader. I tried to explain that it, I never did that. But it was her word against mine. And that's a losing battle. We were alone after it all happened, but to no avail. He trusted her. Motherfucker only cared about them boobs, I think. <laughs> it's the default of any guy, innit? Boobs. <laughs> boobs wins. I was heartbroken. Angry. I whispered Exy in game and told her to get her slimy ass into a private channel with me. So we could sort this out one on one. Once and for all. No. <laughs> oh, played. Look, let's sort this out. Mano a mano. No. You see, the problem with what you're trying to do is you're trying to find a resolution, and I'm already winning. So, no. I think I'll just stay as I am, if that's all right with you. <laughs> I think I'll just stay as I am. <laughs> She said, why don't I go and find myself a dead beaver? Oh, shit. Oh, she never forgets, mate. She never forgets. Go and find a dead beaver. And she put me on ignore. The last thing I saw before I was G-kicked was a message from Valden in the guild chat stating, how could you say that to a woman? <gasps> the white knight mic drop. How could you speak that way about dead beavers? Outrageous. I turned WoW off, went to bed. I was furious. I couldn't get to sleep. I eventually just went on TeamSpeak, hoping to catch Exy or Valden there and vent out some rage. Thankfully, neither were there. Otherwise, I probably would have woken up with my entire house and never seen WoW again. Eric and the Luo were bros and followed me promptly out of the guild and tried cheering me up in school the next day, but failed. 
All I could think about was yelling and screaming at that bitch. I got home, got onto TeamSpeak, changed my ID, waiting in ambush. I stared at the screen for over an hour until I saw her join. I immediately got into the channel she joined. Instead of screaming, however... Get your chickens ready. I started crying. I broke down. Where a righteous fury was supposed to growl at her. All I managed was a wimpy, beta, crybaby whinge. <laughs> oh no, it's so sad. My furious echoes turned into tears and weeping. I begged for my raid spot back. She openly laughed at me. Oh no, boys! And she openly laughed. I can't, oh God, I can't even picture this happening in my mind without wanting to just leave the room. I, I actually want to walk away from this story <laughs> myself. I'm reading it and I want to go away. <laughs> she openly laughed at me and said, I won, asshole. And she did reinvite me to the guild. Valden, being a dumbass as always, thought I had just apologized and, what, and said he didn't want to hear anything more about it. Fast forward again a little bit. With Kata coming out, most of the server was going back to retail to give it a go. Fucking retailers, man. Fucking kneelers. Kneelers. Including almost everyone from our guild. We decided to go our separate ways mostly, but some thought it could be fun to form our little guild again and start fresh on the same server. I didn't join them at first, but soon realized I missed having a lot of friends to play with. Eric and the Lou and myself eventually server transferred and started leveling there. During the initial part of Kata, we became really good friends with Valden. As it turned out, he might have been just as stupid as fuck. Not mean, not malicious, just really dumb. But he was a decent guy, all in all. Fun to hang her out with. Just don't give him any math problems. We even realized that he lived just two hours away from us. And would sometimes have him over for weekends. Do go out for some beers. We don't let him play darts. You know, things like that. Exy and I, though, eventually had another falling out. During the opening weekend of the Bastion of Twilight, it was even worse than last time. Though this time, she got the thick end of it and was forced to apologize to me. I had the upper hand. At this point, the wheels in my head started turning. I saw an opportunity for revenge. I told her that I would be a proper human being, unlike her. And I was willing to talk, talk out our issues in private. Calmly, politely, until we sorted out our issues. She agreed. What do you think of this play? This is a bad play. He should have just been smug about it. He should have been a man and been super smug about it and left it there. That's the play. If you get the opportunity to be, to be the smugs, that's what you do. She agreed. We both took out time the next day. Oh, God, you scheduled it? Fucking hell. Scheduled it? We both took out time the next day to sit down together and finally sort it all out. We got into a TeamSpeak channel alone, and in all honesty, surprisingly, we had a decent conversation at first. A few jabs here and there, but overall pretty civilized. I told her that she was a complete bitch when the roles were turned around, and I saw no reason why I shouldn't do the same to her. She said she would do anything to avoid being kicked from the raid team, or God forbid the guild. Now, I can't stress this enough. I hated this fucking rusty, dead beavered bitch. I hated her. She made me cry in front of her. She'd made me apologize. I was filled with rage. As the conversation went on, I did what any 17-year-old boy would do. I made a play to see them boobs.
Not knowing if I was going to record it or not. <clears throat> and hopefully, we could just have a tug and a pull. I convinced her to do it. I gave her my Skype, the call name. Boobs were seen. Dick was hard, and not just because of them boobs. They were good boobs, though. Getting towards the end, I told her, I won, bitch, and cancelled the call. <laughs> I won, bitch! <clears throat> she came back into the TeamSpeak channel, but didn't say a word. And I said, I'm going to win. I revealed all along that Eric, the Luo, and Valden were in the same room. They had not only seen her boobies, just to keep her raid spot, but also heard the entire story of what happened the first time. As we had talked about it in the conversation. She still never spoke. She was unceremoniously G-kicked and banned from TeamSpeak. But not before I managed to say the last words that I ever spoke to her. I would still rather fuck a dead beaver. I would still rather fuck a dead beaver. In hindsight, as a more mature person now, I kind of feel bad about it. And realise I was kind of a twat. I tried to get in touch with her to apologise, but could never find her again. Even more sad is that one night after one too many beers, Vald had admitted to me that she told him she had a crush on me and was considering inviting me over to Grandma's place during the summer so he could smash. <gasps> cock blocked! The GM! Andy! Cock blockage! The cock blockinator! The blocking of the cocking! The cock blockinator. The cock blockinator strikes, man. Unknowing. Ah, oh, accidental cock block. What a bummer. The accidental cock block. Nothing worse. But having a crush on her himself, he decided not to tell me. And if you want to feel better about it, chat, I remained a virgin for another year or so. 19? 19? Virgin. Not in Manchester. Not in Manchester. Not in mate. Manchester, son. That's twice the age. Yeah. Why <laughs> That's like three times older than I was. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I'm now engaged to the woman of my dreams. And we casually raid some heroics in Legion. Oh, you're a casual? Ugh, I'm joking. Along with Erica the Luau, who after years admitted their love for each other. Oh, Erica Luau are popping cocks. Score. Yeah. Poppy Deeps, Poppy Cox, Kappa Pride. They're also happily living together, and we all keep in touch with Valden, mostly to poke fun at him for being a dumbass without him even realizing it. Thank you for reading my little story. It's a good story. <laughs> it's a good story. But I have a question which calls the situation into doubt. What, what did you have over her? That could have cost her her raid spot. Because that's not here. What did you have over her? Update me. Email me. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. Because there was something. <clears throat> apparently. There was something. That you had over her. That you never mentioned. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. That wasn't the twist. That wasn't the twist. No, 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 no. no. I want to. I want to know. I want to know. Right then. <clears throat> let's have a fun one, considering we're all raiding again. <laughs> everyone's. Everyone's. <clears throat> let's have one. The mad crush. The mad crush. I don't think the crush is what it's going to do. I don't think it's the crush at all. All right then. You think it's a bayboozle? Potentially. Well, that's all right. It was a good story, regardless. Uh, okay, <clears throat> we need a uh, we need an asshole, and that shall be Serum King. <laughs> Grats, Serum. It's worth the ten bucks, right? <laughs> it's worth the ten bucks. <laughs> all right. <then. clears throat> all right. All right. Hello, Preacher, and a big shout-outs to the one-man army that is the ghost. Sith, mate, Darkseid, represent. <laughs> I would love Kylo Ren to be like that. 
That, what? That would be biss. <laughs> that would be biss. <laughs> if Kyle Ren was like that, that would be biss. Before this story drama begins, <clears throat> there's a little bit of pre-drama. I need some pre-drama that I had to explain. This drama takes place between myself and another gentleman, <clears throat> wanker, <laughs> brackets, in my guild. I want everyone to know that I did do this, but I tried to amend my ways. The pre-drama involved me white knighting a former female member of the guild and going nuts on a guy because of how he had treated her. I want to say I got extremely self-righteous. I know now that I was a dick. I feel bad for what I said and I wish so much that I never did it. I apologize to everyone that had been upset when they found out about it and I apologize to him as well. This is where the current drama begins. All right. All right. <clears throat> we do need a PG Fedora remote. We do. We, do that. we can do that. I think I'll have to do the face. I'll have to get the double chin in. <laughs> Could be the double chin. <laughs> so upon apologizing to Serum King, he said to me something along the lines. Hey, bitch! Of, I'll think about it. I was annoyed by this, but I understood. I'd probably hurt his feelings a lot, and I wasn't expecting him to be all friendly with me straight away. After a few more weeks, it seemed like he wasn't going to forgive me, which again, is fine. I made a mistake. However, we are a raiding guild, and it was causing problems. You see, he had muted me in the Discord server. He was the main tank. This was causing a lot of problems. A ruckus. I can't imagine being in a raid where somebody has muted someone else. In fact, it happened to me recently. No, not that recently. But get this, Andy. There was a member of our guild yeah. who is from a country. Yeah. And there's another member of our guild who's from a different country. And it was illegal for them to communicate. How the fuck does that work? I don't want to get into it. <laughs> but there was a legal problem with them speaking. Uh, so they couldn't reveal that that was going on, uh, which was really sad, really sad. They did communicate, obviously. This, they had to, uh, it was explained to me that they had to, like, pretend the other, they didn't know where the other person was from. Do you know what I mean? That's crazy. Just in case, just in case. Yeah, Mephisto nailed it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mephisto nailed it. It was really sad because they were good buddies, uh, but they weren't allowed to, like, express their cap of pride for each other. <laughs> Bummer. Uh, either way, either way, but still not out of like maliciousness or anything like that. Not out of maliciousness. <sighs> I could hear him, but if I ever needed to say something to him in the middle of a raid to try and help or something like that, as I'm a healer, I would have to ask somebody else first and get them to ask him. Andy. Yes, mate. Can you ask chat for a sacrifice? Can I have a sacrifice? What did he say? Nothing. All right, no sack then. What about now? <laughs> Let me know when you need a sack. <clears throat> oh, it's okay. They're not, they're not together in the guild anymore. It's fine. People are sacrificing themselves for me, mate. You see, this is the difference between me and you. Everything. And the first response is everything. Yeah. I've sacrificed the, the world. You guys are I fucking awesome, man. I a red carpet. I offer myself as trippy. <laughs> you guys are amazing. It's good to be here. <clears throat> it is. Okay, so this is what this guild was doing between the healer and the main tank was asking someone else to ask the main tank to do something and then replying that way. That's what they were doing. Oh, no, because he could hear him. That's fine. He wasn't mute. Okay. <clears throat> this, there were a few instances where this caused wipes, especially since the Nighthold had just come out, and obviously, a lack of communication is a pretty big problem. 
At the end of another failed raid attempt, there was just me, Serum King, and an officer in the Discord chat. So I started. I said, Andy, could you ask Serum King if he could unmute me on Discord? Just tell him I'm not expecting him to be my friend, but having me muted is causing problems with communication. Now, I know that you lost interest halfway through that. Sorry, and the officer mate. just... I didn't know you were still no, speaking to me. No, I mean in real terms. If you were that officer in that Discord chat, you would just lose interest halfway through, wouldn't you? And I'm just like, just unmute him, bro. <laughs> just unmute him. Why, why all the hate? I, I haven't got hatred. Why can't I don't hate any. I don't hate anybody but you, really. Like on a global level. You just wanted to slip that in there, did you? <laughs> That's what wow. I Wow. It's the way I roll. I'm stealing so much shit out of this place when I go on tonight. <laughs> the officer agreed that, yeah, it's an issue. So he started. <clears throat> Serum King, can you unmute Arthur because it's causing problems in raid? He doesn't want you to be your friend, but he would like you to be able to hear him. Now, something you should know about this officer, Andy. He's great. He actually says this here. He's great. You're great. I am great. You're mate. great. Thanks. You're great. Everyone likes him. Oh, this is not you. Everyone likes him. He's well respected, and he's just generally a cool dude. Boom. Yeah. Bombshell. Nailed it. Yeah. Straight off the bat. People don't tend to say no to him when he makes a request because it's always reasonable and fairly put. Right. Right. However, Serum King replied, <laughs> I'll do it when I feel like it, and left the call. <laughs> Hero. <laughs> Both I and the officer were shocked. Days went by before we ran the next raid, and again, Serum King got my ass on mute. At this point, I went to a different officer and again asked, Please, can you ask Serum King to unmute me so we can listen to each other in raids? Now, the second officer is a man who takes no shit. Yeah? Shaggins, officer. 2017. <laughs> he doesn't make requests. He makes orders. <laughs> However, people still like and respect him. So he came in strong with a lot of bass in it. Serum King, unmute, author. It's causing problems. Serum King simply replied, I'm sick of being told what to do. Left Discord, left the raid. Well, shit. As he had known all along, we couldn't raid now. We couldn't find another tank. And that was it. So we disbanded and went about our merry ways. I was involved in a conversation with the officers. They all agreed it was causing issues. They knew that it started off with what I did and my white knighting. They also agreed that it was now him, though, who was in the wrong. But he was the main tank. I had done everything I could to try and rectify my actions. But he just seemed to want to hate me for the sake of it. And keep me muted just to spite me. I did think of a solution though. I started pouring all my AP into my truth guard. I set my loose spec to protection and in the coming weeks I got myself geared as fuck to tank. Bro. One night, yet again, the officers requested that Serum King unmute me so we can fix them. Rid him of this thing. He told him to fuck off. It's not his problem and left the raid group again. was heard over TS. The guild collectively sighed. They resigned for another night of either pugging a tank or doing world quests. 
I took my moment. I got this, boys. I switched to tank in spec. We pugged a replacement for me. You also joined the guild that night. A motherfucking Seren King was kicked before the raid even ended. Ended. Victory was fucking mine as the main tank of our guild. Serum King obviously logged on later and realized that he was no longer in the guild, something he never expected as being the main tank. He came back on knees, desperately begging to join the guild. He said he would unmute me, it was just a joke that had gone too far, and apologized for being unreasonable. The GM told him to fuck off. I had been a member longer than he had, and he respected my loyalty over his disrespect. That was the night I turned to a tank preacher, and I still am to this day. Fucking baller. That's how a man does it. Yeah? You know the guy in the last story fucking crying? Crying? My bro put a fucking shield on. Spartan style. Spartan style. Took it to the fucking pink straight away. All right. Shit, we're low on time. Okay, I'm going to have to... Sp we're going zoom zoom, boys. We're going zoom zoom. Oh, I'm trying to go zoom zoom and the keyboard's not working. Fucking biss. What a day. What a day to be preached. Right, we're going zoom zoom here, lads. Alright, uh, we need uh, Saracen, who's going to be a tank. What a quality name. Gladiators, mate. Fucking. And uh, our girl. Ba -ba -da -ba, will be girls. You need to send some better stories in. <laughs> the girls are shit. No, like the lads are shitting on you again, girls. We need to fight back. I know you're there. I see this. I know. Girls, better step it up, right? We're going zoom zoom. Hello, preaching a handsome smile over to that ghosty. Wink at you, girl. Greetings from Team Missouri. Missouri. I say else, but I won't. Missouri. <laughs> Missouri. Missouri. Down here, Missouri. I'm doing things a little <laughs> differently now. <laughs> the story begins in early Legion in the Emerald Nightmare. My friends and I tried to start our own guild to raid in Legion. We had good synergy when raiding in Final Fantasy XIV and Wrath of the Lich King. So we had the experience to run raids and do progression. One of my roommates was in a server-first heroic Deathwing guild, and I've raided up until the Sunwell in TBC. We're all competent players. We began gearing up our characters, and soon we were ready to start our solid 10-man team. However, one of our friends got arrested for dealing drugs, and he happened to be the other tank. <laughs> well, fuck. So the option of us raiding kind of ended. A few friends just gave up on the game, and our guild was over before it had started. My roommate told me that he had found a guild in trade chat looking for active members. Brava. Brava. Solved it. Instantaneously. No questions asked. Hey, that sounds bad, but I found a guild in trade chat that's right up for us. Easy game. Despite watching your channel, I thought this time might be different and joined this obvious cesspool guild. <laughs> Why? Although I must say this. The people were very nice, and I still talk to some of them today. We joined the guild, and my chat box filled up with welcomes. Join us on Discord. Let us bounce together. I joined the chat, started to meet the people. We had our raid leader, a disabled veteran who spends his days leading raids and helping out the guild. The other raid leader, a shaman who is a chef. I was going to culinary school and working in restaurants at the time, so we got along great talking about knives, tomato skins and shit. I don't know. Cooking stuff. The group's main healer was, and a young rep pally who was an engineering student and a really, who really took a liking to me. There was also Isla in the chat. A hunter. I introduced myself and we got to shooting the shit with each other and a few hours later it was raid time. The raid experience in Emerald Nightmare was, I don't know how to describe it. Let's use the word iffy. Iffy. Despite one-shotting the first three bosses, we spent two raid nights on Spider Normal.
I really wanted to leave the guild right there, but I decided I'm going to stick it out. <laughs> Some good stick to itiveness is what we need, team. We're going to do this. <laughs> we got this. We got this. <sighs> now, it became clear. Everyone in the guild was pretty nice, but most of them don't know how to play World of Warcraft. This would become a problem. By the time we did make it to Ilganoth, our off tank had had so much of the stress of raiding that he rage quit mid fight. <laughs> this is too stressful. I can't do it. It's too much. There's eyes over there. There's a fucking other one over there. It's like a fucking head tie in here. Nobody's getting fucked except me. This is a waste of time. There's blood on the floor. The fuck is going on? I'm out. Best night ever. <laughs> Best night ever. Oh my god. <sighs> this left us with no regular off tank. The spot was filled between our shaman's DK and my demon hunter. Eventually we did find a new tank, a prop pally by the name of Saracen. God, he's good. And a new druid healer so I could switch over to shadow and abuse surrender to madness. Rip, never forget. Although it's kind of bad now. Saracen was a well-seasoned tank. He'd main tanked and raid leaded since vanilla. Between Saracen, our two raid leaders, and myself, we got this shit going. Into heroic. Got ahead of the ahead of the curve, Xavius. Whole guild fell apart at TLV, though. <clears throat> a lot of the group quit the game or stopped caring about raiding once we came up against Odin. Oh, is that why you wrote this story? I was talking about Heroic Odin, wasn't I, recently on stream. I bet that's what inspired you. And with Nightfall coming out in a few weeks, we decided it would be best for the guild if we stopped trying to progress on TOV. And just recruit for the Nighthold. <laughs> Our mage and shaman raid leaders were stepping down. Chef Shaman was opening his own restaurant in Montreal. <laughs> And I had no time to play the game anymore. And our mage just wanted to relax and not lead anymore. Just be a deeps. Saracen and I decided to take over. We were confident that we were going to get this group to Mythic. Get that crisp, cutting-edge Gul'dan achievement. Let's see what happens. The Nighthold finally released and we were ready. I got home from work with a pizza and a six-pack of Newcastle Brown. Ew! I need to show the stream. Ew! Nobody drinks Newcastle Brown. Ugh. That's disgusting. Alright. <laughs> that is Newcastle Brown Ale. <laughs> the one and only Newcastle Brown Ale. <laughs> A bit of Nuki Brown. <laughs> oh, it's so foul. Oh, it's gross. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so, so bad. Oh my god, that is filth. Uh, <clears throat> what a raid night. A Nuki Brown. God, we used to, I think me and Andy in the pub will back me up on this. We used to go through about 12 crates of Nuki yeah. Brown a night in the pub with all the bikers. Great. Fucking hell. Ugh, I, their piss must have just looked like mud. <laughs> mud pisses. That's what I call them. Anyway. <clears throat> and I logged in ready to kick some ass. I even got Cephas's ring on that Mythic Plus chest that week too. Shadow Priest Cephas, surrender to madness. Mwah. Things were great. 7 p.m., we all zoned in. Cleared trash. Started explanation of the bosses. Scorpion. Spanked. Chromatic Anomaly. Spanked. Trilliax. Fuck. <laughs> we got there. We got there. Spellblade was the wall. An hour and a half of Spellblade. We decided to skip Spellblade normal and move on to Grossus. It was an utter failure. The DPS just... I'm not sure they were even zoned in. 
After the raid, Cyrus and myself and the other officers met in a channel and decided to cut anyone who wasn't meeting DPS requirements. The following raid night, we sent out invites to everyone except for the 12 people who we thought were good enough. My screen was filling up with whispers saying, Where's my info, bro? Why am I not being invited? Are you seriously cutting people? You is fucking elitist, mate! Discord was also filled with the shouts of the rage. We explained that people were being cut so we could actually kill bosses. It wasn't personal, but you aren't meeting the basic requirements. Why not go and do some Keystones or LFR? We will be all happy to help you guys. Until then, please leave the raid channel. Very polite. Sure enough, with our numbers trimmed, we killed the bosses very quickly. Halfway through the raid, the GM comes to the channel and was furious. Why are you kicking people from the raid? We needed to cut people. We weren't pulling enough DPS to down the bosses, bruv. That's all. They are welcome to come back when we get this on farm. It's just for now, so we know what we're doing and we can get them through it. Get the main group geared, you know? Then we'll be happily bring everybody. They can all have some loot. Until then... Why don't you help others? Run some keystones, something like that. This is not what this guild is about. Everyone is welcome. And no one is to feel excluded from content. We all want to get to higher content. This is the way we know how. We're not trying to exclude anybody. It's just what we have to do to actually get to the content. Let me tell you what's best for this guild. What's best for this guild is letting everyone play the game. What if I lead a second group on the weekend where anyone can join, you know, something like that. Is that going to be all right with you? The GM thinks it over and reluctantly agrees and lets us resume the raid. I regretted offering to do that, but I wanted our group to progress, so I'll suffer through leading the garbage players on the weekend so our main group can actually do some fun stuff. After the raid, I made the announcement of Team 2, Saturday Team. I got a lot of positive responses. Everyone was very excited. I wasn't prepared for the absolute shit show that was about to happen. Saturday arrived. I was on my Demon Hunter tank and I sent out the ims to the group telling them to head to the stone at Nighthold. The Discord was full of prote protests saying they were not ready for the Nighthold. And can we do Emerald Nightmare Normal to warm up? Fuck my life, dude. <sighs> I reluctantly agreed. We make our way to the Emerald Nightmare and we all zone in. Discord was filling up with complaints. Because my raid was still set to heroic. Change it to normal! I tell them it's not actually that big of a deal. You all outgear this. Heroics are pretty much the same as normal. Do normal! I sigh. I crack open a Nuki Brown. And we all zone out. Change to normal. The raid goes, go goes good up until... Quick, 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 quick. Ilganoth. Two hours we spend wiping on Ilganoth normal. Watching the rot in front of the eye. Blood's running everywhere. I was about to call the raid. I decided to do one more attempt. By some miracle, the boss died. Loot was distributed and our first weekend raid team during the night hold patch, managed to clear Ilganoth normal. Despite wanting to kill myself, everyone was content with how the raid went, and some people got items, and they seemed very happy about it. New guild members got gear, no one felt left out. The GM was off our backs, <laughs> and the main team was progressing to heroic. The weekend group, however, was becoming more and more unbearable. Between my work, dealing with other obligations at home, social life, raiding. I was burning out. I started getting drunk on the weekend team to make it more interesting. After a month, we could finally go to normal Nighthold. 
where we never made it past Triliax. <laughs> I was becoming irritated, but I didn't want to be the angry raid leader. Instead, I made it a game with my roomie. We'd take a shot for each wipe. I was obliterated within the hour and called the raid early. I then received a whisper from someone. It was one of the new hunters we picked up a few weeks ago. Oh, called uh, Isla. The message says, I enjoy raiding with you and was wanting to know if I can join the main group. Her DPS was Deese. She did mechanics. She has good knowledge about the fights. I bring this up with Saracen. He agrees and the new hunter was brought into Team 1. We talk more and more and start to hit it off great. She offers to help lead the weekend, re weekend raid team so I could take a break sometime. We have fun talking Discord, flirting, getting to know each other. I soon learn that she lives near me and decide to meet up sometime after we've talked to each other more and more. Phone numbers exchanged and we also added each other on the battle swag and the good book. We would stay up late talking on the phone, playing other games, texting. It felt great. I haven't had feelings for someone in years. Jesus Christ, you make it sound like you're cold and dead inside. She even bought me the Sandstone Drake mount. I eventually decided it was time to meet. I called her, she agrees. We will have we will we will be having supper and drinks at a local restaurant. What the fuck? Supper. I know! Hey, do you wanna go for supper and drinks? I wonder if she fucking fifth <laughs> <laughs> Put a teeth in <laughs> Supper and Supper. drinks. We're talking to a man who likes a Newcastle brown ale. Oh, she's fucking big woman with no teeth, isn't she? <laughs> she's a big woman with no teeth. Does he trade the bottle caps in? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's not judge just based on the word supper. <clears throat> supper. Does she wear a house coat? <laughs> At a restaurant we've been trying to go to for quite some time on Saturday evening after the raid. I was beyond excited as I haven't been on a date in four years. And I hadn't had sex in six years. Boys. <laughs> Don't laugh, you bitch. Six years? Six years. Six fucking years, man. But he had to take something to wait the poor bastard up. Oh. Wait, you're married. You haven't had sex in six years either. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm ki the kids are four and two. <laughs> Got someone to tell me. <laughs> I mean, it is time. I didn't want to do this That's not the problem, Sarge. I've got two kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the problem. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. We'll talk about this over dinner. Yeah, but, uh, do you want me to take you for dinner while you explain to me where my kids are from? Yeah. Yeah. Cl classy bird. Uh, where were we? Okay, so we're going... Uh, okay, he's not had sex for six years. That's where we were up to. I prepare my outfit for the date. Oh, what's he going to Wait, let me tell you. Does it tell you the outfit? No. Oh, baby. Listen. Checkered shirt. Hurry up, I've got to run out of time. Uh, I prepare my outfit for the date, clean my car, trim my hair, and then head out. Oh, I'm going to run out of time. I prepare my outfit for the date, clean my car, trim my beard, check myself in the mirror, and I look quite dapper. I swing by the local pharmacy and pick up a packet of condoms in case. No, he did not. I drove to the place we agreed to meet up at and it was there so early I just waited outside for her. About 10 minutes pass and I hear her voice and she comes walking up with someone. It was her mother. She tells me she cannot drive so her mum has to drive her to places. I was concerned but it was understandable. Maybe her car's totaled or not drivable or had to move for home for a little bit. No shame in that. And besides, she was very cute. Nice and thick. Yeah, told you. Big woman with no teeth. <laughs> now, thick doesn't mean that anymore, Emma. Thick now has two C's in it, if you what didn't know. <laughs> You'll get up to date tonight. Look, okay. Boys, that's your job for tonight. I liked it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with lovely thick black framed glasses and a rocking, nerdy hipster aesthetic. I like your aesthetic. I like your aesthetic. <laughs> I was expecting her mother to leave after I said hello, but her mother walks into the restaurant with us. She was going to sit at a different table to give us some space. Wait, how old's this girl? I was in shock. This wasn't high school. We we're both in our mid 20s. But whatever, I think to myself, just roll with it. 
That pretty much ruins any chance of hooking up tonight. But whatever, we get along and we like each other despite this situation. We are seated at our table and order our drinks. Pint of Guinness for myself. Who orders Guinness on a date? Buy a Guinness at the restaurant. Well, now we've realised he's having sex, he's just loading up on heavy ale. Heavy ale. Well, I'm not banging tonight, so I'm about to get tanked. Yeah. Pint of Guinness for myself and a gin and tonic for the lady. <laughs> Baby shab for the lady. <clears throat> oh, at least she has damn good drink taste. We started to talk and get to know each other even better. She asked me about my work. I tell her it's been busy, but I've been liking my job. I then ask her about her work. When she responds with, well, I don't work. Of course she doesn't. <laughs> How come? I respond, think maybe she's just down on her luck between jobs. Well, my social anxiety acts up whenever I tried working. So I usually quit within the first day or so. I haven't been able to hold a job for about nine years. Yeah. Well, that's just fantastic, I think to myself. She's unemployed, lives at home, can't drive, and brings her mum to dates. This was not looking good. Well, at least we can be friends, because we do get along fine. I just don't want to date someone who's been employed for that long and lives at home. The conversation continues talking about WoW, anime, music, and other games. She then looks at me and asks me if she could ask a personal question. I say, sure. I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you, like, 30 seconds to guess what this question is. Have you ever shagged a rat? Stop! Oh. Go! I'm trying to speed through this. All right, hurry up, then, because I need to get James. She asked me, do I believe in ghosts? I'll see you later. <laughs> and the supernatural. I say I do not. <laughs> she instantly looked offended. And her tone changed. Why wouldn't you believe in ghosts, she says. There's so much proof out there. I have proof. After you see this, you're going to believe. She rolled up her arms and revealed a big handprint. I got this from when our house spirit was angry. Even my mum was attacked. Okay. Guinness. <laughs> Pat <Pie> of Guinness. <laughs> in a, in a pot of Guinness. <clears throat> She goes on and on about how angry the ghost was. And then she goes on to say she's so happy to meet me and that perhaps I'll make a great husband one day. At this point, I'm legit done. <clears throat> I finish my pint and after a minute or so, say, excuse me, make a fake call, phone call, and I just flat out walk out of the restaurant. <laughs> I said something along the lines of my roommate's car is a flat and he's stranded on the side of the road and doesn't have a jack. She looks upset, but says it's no problem. I get my food to go. What a player. Hey, still pay for this shit, though. Still pay for this shit. Give me my food in a bag and stands there. I bet it takes like five minutes as well. And he just awkwardly stands there. Right. <laughs> Over at the till as well. Like leaves her at the table while he awkwardly stands there waiting for them to bag up the food. What a fucking player. As I'm leaving, she says, I love you. <laughs> I get in my car and get the fuck out of there and go to my friend's place to crack open some cold ones with the boys and drunkenly play some League of Legends. <sighs> That's my little story. <laughs> That's a really bad day, isn't it? That's a really bad day. That's a really bad day. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm going out with my boys and my waifu. Hi, waifu. Do you like anime? No. Fuck. Oh? Oh? Why? <laughs> no reason. Ladies and gents, Ember will be with you at what time? 
8.30 and she needs to know what thick means. Please enlighten my wife as to what thick means. Thank you for the subs and stuff while we were doing our show here. Thank you all uh, for a great week as well. Thank you all, guys. I will be back on Monday. We're doing some Breath of the Wild and Resident Evil 7 next week, which looks awesome. It looks fantastic. Other than that, I will see you again. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Do something special with it. We're going to see Santa Claus with the kids. Yeah. Yep. We're going to see Santa Claus with the kids. I'm doing all that kind of stuff. And your brother. My brother? You invited him? No, he's not coming. Oh, we're going to go see my brother? Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, fuck off, man. Every fucking time. <laughs> Why?